There's lots of AI already in our lives. You can already see it on your smartphone. Every time you use Siri, every time you ask Alexa a question, every time you actually use your satellite navigation, you're using one of these algorithms, you're using some, some AI that's recognizing your speech, answering questions, giving you search results, recommending books for you to buy on Amazon. They're the beginnings of, of AI everywhere in our lives. I mean, I think the biggest advances you're seeing uh, is, is largely due to, uh, you know, two things. The techniques which we use in deep learning, uh, deep neural networks, uh, have been around for many years. But early on, you know, they weren't that effective because you just didn't have the computational power to run, uh, run these algorithms. Uh, you know, just for the past many years, uh, the computational power has dramatically increased. So when you run uh, deep learning on the latest computation, and with access to better data, you get dramatic breakthroughs. Uh, the, the interface between humans and, and machines, uh, I think, is, is something that I know Joyce thought a lot about. This is where the idea of extended intelligence uh, you know, makes a lot of sense. Uh, it also is probably the better way of thinking about it for our economy and jobs, because people worry that, well, are we gonna get into a situation where a machine's just doing everything? We don't think about electricity. Electricity powers our planet. It powers pretty much everything we do. It's going to be that you walk into a room and you say, room, lights on. You walk in, you sit in your car and you say, take me home. A driverless car is, is essentially a robot. It has a computer that takes input from its sensors and produces an output. The main sensors are radar, which can be found in adaptive cruise control ultrasonic sensors and then there's cameras that collect images and this data is used to control the car to slow the car down to accelerate the car to turn turn the wheels advances in machine learning i think will make a big difference in many many fields uh, you know we recently published a paper on you know using machine learning uh, to help diagnose uh, diabetic retinopathy it's a condition which causes blindness but if you can detect it earlier, you can completely cure it. Otherwise, it causes blindness. It's the fastest growing cause of blindness in the world. You know, today you need advanced ophthalmologists to detect these conditions. But using machine learning, we can detect it pretty accurately so that a, a, a regular doctor can detect these conditions. I'm saying this is an early example of the kind of changes that will happen when you apply machine learning to all kinds of fields. You know, Google alone won't do this, but you know, to me, I'm, the thing I'm most excited about is bringing advances from machine learning and AI to as many people in as many fields as possible. Yeah. Um, what we want to be able to do is develop systems that are open enough, transparent enough that human judgment, human imagination, creativity are still intruding, uh, are, are still active, uh, but a lot of the routine stuff is happening day to day. And in some ways that's just analogous to you know, how we use calculators, right? It, yeah, it's, a, it's an extension of our intelligence, um, but it's a simple enough one that it doesn't feel as threatening as it does, partly because we understand exactly what's going on. Machine learning is the little part of AI that's focused on teaching programs to learn. If you think about how we, we got to be intelligent, we started out not knowing very much when we were born, and most of what we got is through learning and so we write programs that learn to improve themselves they need at the moment lots of data and they get better and better and in many cases but certainly for narrow focused domains we can often actually exceed human level performance i think the biggest misconception is that everyone talks about automation as destroying jobs the reality is that automation changes every job. It's not so much about what jobs will we do, but how will we do our jobs? Because automation isn't gonna affect some workers, it's gonna affect every worker. People are already unhappy because a lot of machine learning, artificial intelligence killing a lot of jobs. People start to worry. Those, the background, the, the, the education background, if, you cannot, if you're not innovative enough, if you're not like a creative enough, your job will be taken away by a lot of machines. There is a $2.1 trillion opportunity for us over the next 15 years. But here's the thing, we only get that opportunity if 
we do two things. Firstly, if we manage the transition and we ensure that all of that time that is lost to machines from the Australian workplace is redeployed and people are found new jobs and new tasks. And condition number two is that we embrace automation and bring it into our workplaces and take advantage of the benefits of technology and productivity. What should these young people do today or tomorrow to get ready for this? There really is only one strategy and that is to embrace the technology and to learn about it and to understand as far as possible you know, what kind of impact it has on your job and your goal. I think the, the key skills that people need are the skills to work with machines. I don't think everyone needs to become a coder. You know, in fact, if artificial intelligence is any good, machines will be better at writing code than humans are. But people need to be able to work with code, work with the output of those machines uh, and turn it into valuable uh, commodities and services that other people want. I disagree that we're going to necessarily have to work with the machines. The machines actually are going to understand us quite well. Um, so what are our strengths? What are human strengths? Well, those are our creativity, our adaptability, and our emotional and social intelligence. I tend to be on the optimistic side that historically we've absorbed new technologies uh, and people find that new jobs are created and they migrate and our standards of living generally go up. The trend is going to be toward big companies like Amazon and Google. Uh, I don't really see a fragmentation because whoever has the data has the power.